I've got a, a presentation about <clears throat> the, the new venture which has just literally popped into existence in the last couple of weeks called Open Source Marketing. There's a lot more questions than there are answers. Um, we've got a couple of the Inner Circle group online and we've also got um, Manuel who's a colleague of mine in, interested in is a conversion optimization professional and was also one of the people who, who founded the Lean Startup Conference that I attended recently, which is really enlightening and is also informing, is part of, you know, everything informs everything, doesn't it, in marketing? So, okay, so feel free to jump in. So open source marketing, we'll, we'll start from the, the absolute fundamentals. Why, why do it at all? Okay. So as I've read up about the the origins of open source specifically because it obviously open source came out of software development and a lot of these software products are extraordinarily complex if you're thinking about operating systems like windows linux um, even web browsers like mozilla um, the uh, apache web server or the wordpress publishing platform all of these are extremely complex products and if you're going to, I mean, just, just we only need to look at the, the uh, product Internet Explorer to realize that even a company as large as Microsoft can get something like that very, very wrong. You know, um, Firefox was a better browser than Internet Explorer for a long time. Chrome has then come along. Google's done a much, much better job of it. Um, but the reason why, one of the reasons why open source works very well is because you can apply and get a lot of eyeballs and a lot of um, brains working on a project in a very cost-efficient way to to address a large and complex software development project using a top-down hierarchical system where you have to pay everybody and organize them into teams is, an, is a mammoth undertaking it's like running a war so you know in, with things like Linux and Apache and WordPress coming along They've, um, you know, found a, a far more cost-efficient way to to make these things happen by putting the the source code out in the public domain, enabling anybody to contribute to the project even in a small way. Um, and obviously, the byproduct of that is making the the material free. So what we're looking at at a very high level is taking that principle and applying it to a marketing system. Second point is that nobody can master marketing these days. Back when I started and the my forthcoming book, Web Design is Dead, is going to talk you through this this entire kind of uh, life cycle of online publishing. At the beginning, it was possible for one person to know pretty much what you needed to know. You know, you could you could master Perl, HTML, Photoshop, a bit of JavaScript, and you're away. You could then be a webmaster and you could justify that title of webmaster because you pretty much knew what you needed to know. The, the, um, the industry, the sector, has fragmented an awful lot since then. We've got disciplines like SEO and CRO and you know so many different tools and so many different platforms coming along that... Um, it's 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 literally in it's it's been impossible now for many years for one person even to know really a fraction of what you can know about online publishing and i should say at this point that that the the idea about open source marketing is not necessarily limited to online marketing that just happens to be the sector that we've all come from okay as we said, many hands, many eyeballs, many brains make light work. And I believe there is also a void. I believe that there is a clear need for a more effective marketing system in the world. And we've got a, a Goliath as well to, to go against because very far, right, here's the pattern. Very fast moving, fast developing market. It's only about 20 years old. Right? I've been in this for 20 years. What happens is people 
realize or dig up old systems or create new systems that appear to work in some particular set of circumstances, they create a course around that or a book or whatever it may be. They flog the course, people try it, may work, may not work. Um, but by the, you know, by the time you've, you've realized whether it works or not, there's more new magic beans for the internet marketing pimps to sell you. I'm not going to get on a big soapbox about, you know, my, uh, my disgust of the, the internet marketing world. I have been part of that world. You know, I have dipped my toe in the water and, uh, you know, I have been guilty of applying some of the techniques that, that I now view as manipulative. So, but, but the, the fact remains that there hasn't been a, an open and freely available marketing education in online marketing. Obviously, with things like copywriting and, and more traditional methods, there's a, a much bigger body of literature that's going back over 100 years from, you know, Claude Hopkins and, and, and so on. Um, the online intelligence has tended to be controlled in the hands of a, a relatively small group of people, you know, the, the internet marketing cartel. So that's something that I want to redress if possible. Now moving on to, to how this thing might work, how it might look, there's an awful lot of questions here and please do feel free to unmute and chip in. We need a, a day one structure, right? The structure being what are the parameters of the open source marketing system, right? Linux has its parameters. WordPress has its parameters. We know what the inputs are, what it's meant to do, um, what it doesn't do. Right, so, and obviously marketing is a very, very broad, very, very broad area. No one can know it all. Therefore, just to, to wrap up the previous point, that's why we need everybody involved. Because we've all got our, our particular areas. You know, Brian's got his areas, Chris, Marty, Rob, Manuel, everyone's on this call have got their, their particular insights. And if we can pool all of that knowledge and make all of that knowledge available, what we'll get is a rising tide which lifts all boats. But I digress. Okay, so we need a day one structure. I've got a, a straw man um, to share with you today. We want universal applicability, if possible. That's quite a lofty goal, it's ambitious. What that means is that this should apply to practically any um, any way of doing marketing. It should apply online, offline, small business, large business, non-profits, individuals, whatever it may be. You know, can we, can we make something as universally useful as Linux is? Um, obviously not everyone is on Linux, right? Not everyone uses WordPress, but these are, you know, big, big players in their particular area. That's what I would like to achieve with open source marketing. And as I said, I, I don't think we should have any distinction between online and offline because that's that's actually been part of the problem as, as the book is gonna reveal that um, when we compartmentalize ourselves and when we say, right, I'm a pay-per-click person, I only do analytics, I only do conversion optimization, then what we end up with is, is, a, is a problem for, particularly for the client sector, when they come along and say, I need, you know, I, I need to grow my business. And you, you say, right, well, I'm an SEO person, I'm going to do SEO for you. What they actually need is strategic intelligence and direction, which may then say that SEO is the answer. It may then say then, actually, no, you've got loads of traffic, but you're not converting. We need to work on your conversion. We need to work on your copywriting, your branding, whatever it may be. So we need to be, the system itself, as, as we as a group have been growing and as um, Ultimate Web Design is, is proving to us, we need to be above the specific channels and tactics and platforms that are available to us. The, that is really the one of the core problems 
for the client sector and a core need. We'll need to set up a website to act as a repository for the code base. I've <laughs> done quite a bit of research into the main names. I found opensourcemarketingproject.org is available, but it doesn't exactly roll off the tongue. Opensourcemarketing.org and .com are both owned. I think that the one of them is owned by a pimp who wants no less than $10,000 for it, which uh, I hope that person knows how to whistle because they, they, they can get practicing whistling for that. So yeah, any ideas for a domain name? I mean, it could, it could go on benhunt.com slash OSM, but you know, I don't think this should be branded in any particular way. I think it should, should be under its own banner. And I think that we can all march under that banner. So that's definitely something that we can uh, bash our heads about. A few more notes on the how. We will need um, some way of, of licensing this material. And I'm thinking, obviously there's, there's a number of open source software licenses available like MIT, um, and for example, and I think GNU and stuff like that. They are specifically to do with software and probably won't apply to a marketing system. The Creative Commons would seem to be one of the, the most obvious. So I've currently put ultimatewebdesign.com on a Creative Commons license, which basically means that anybody, anybody can use it, apply it as long as you don't claim it as your own, you have to uh, acknowledge attribution. We'll need a way um, or some structure, some rules about how people can contribute to existing projects. Now the projects could be, you can have a core um, kind of process. You could also have offshoot processes. And, and of course, you can also have commercial offshoots as well. Um, so let's say that somebody's got a course, like, you know, I'm going to speak to Ian Dooley in Australia tomorrow. He's actually, really interestingly, Ian's in, um, doing a lot of a lot of work these days in business um, policies and procedures and systemization. So that's really his, his focus um, more than pay-per-click and, and, and marketing really these days. So that's, that's really fascinating. Now, if, if, if he's got a course or a, a manual or a book that he wants to contribute in that way, what can you do? Can anyone just slap the open source marketing logo on something and say, it's free, right? We just need to be obviously clear about all of these things. And if you want to branch something off, if you want to say, I want to do a version of the circuit for churches, then how do you go about doing that? How do you go about linking, incorporating, referring? You know, we just need some kind of conceptual structure for this. And uh, one of, potentially one of the, the biggest challenge is, is how do you actually manage a community if this grows to a large scale community how do you how do you manage that obviously there are lots of large communities um, on the web and have been for a long long time and they tend to do a pretty good job of self-organizing so I'm sure it's a, it's not an insurmountable problem but it's obviously a uh, you know, something that, that, that we just need to have an idea about. Brian um, suggested people would have to volunteer, and I think that's probably a, yeah, a good thing. Um, Linus Torvalds tends to take, a, f from what I remember, that his policy tends to be a benevolent dictatorship. That's how he deals with the development of the Linux product and the Linux community. Um, obviously, that, that's open source. Mark Zuckerberg takes... A very similar approach, I think, with Facebook. You know, he's passionate um, about the Facebook product, and that that's his focus. And obviously, the Facebook platform itself is then um, home to a you know a lot, huge number of um, of other communities. So, let's look then at this day one system that I would propose, and I'm really, really um, happy to to discuss this. We've got the, the core strategy. As I see it, this is one of the things that is most missing from the world of online marketing today. And that is pretty much summed up 
as it is now, remember, everything's going to grow, everything's in flux, everything should um, evolve and be improved over time. The ultimate web design strategy process is proving, is, to me, it's proving to be the most effective strategic tool that I've ever come across and I've ever used. Um, that's not to say that it's finalized by any means, but I'm volunteering to, to put that forward as saying, here is our starting point for, for strategy. And I think we should have a marketing strategy um, process as part of this, this overall process. The next step that we've already defined within Ultimate Web Design is campaign design. So the strategy says, this is who we are, this is what we aim to do for the world. And at the end of that process, the output of that process should be to say, yes, we've got a really good case to take to market. We know who we're marketing to. We know what the message needs to be. Um, we know who we are, what we're selling, all, all of that stuff. All of that stuff aligns. That's why it's called the circuit. When, the, when it's all in alignment, you get a release of energy. Campaign design is the second phase. And that is where we say, okay, this is how we're going to reach people, engage them, hopefully get their contact information, and this is how we are going to walk with them on the path and take them from where they are now to the point where they need to get. Okay, and we've we've got a, a the uh, a rudimentary process appearing for campaign design. The third phase is going to be rapid delivery. The the cost and difficulty and investment required to publish online has dropped dramatically in the 20 years, 21 years since I've been doing this. Um, that's actually one of, the, one of the, the key reasons why web design is dead is that we've reached a point where you can now purchase platforms, themes, you can subscribe to stuff that is higher quality than it is reasonably possible to build by hand. Okay, but we uh, don't need to go over that now. Everyone's going to be reading the book in a few days, hopefully. And then finally, the, the, the last of the, the core systems within this overall system is going to be live operation. And that's one that you know, you know, Manuel and I and Marty are, are interested in. And, and you know, also Rob, um, when we're thinking about pay-per-click, oh, Brian as well with, with SEO, um, we're talking about monitoring, expanding, growing, and optimizing the marketing system as it is. So I think that that uh, deserves its own um, distinct phase in operation. Okay, so that's that's the the core of it. That is unchanged from Ultimate Web Design. Now within all that second lot. Uh, but by the way, it probably is worth just. There's, there's a word on there. I've put ultimate web design and variants for the core strategy because we've got a, a kind of full scale circuit questionnaire right now, which is probably going to keep growing and, you know, could end up being a blooming encyclopedia. Um, I'm imagining that we, there is probably an argument for us to have um, a one hour version or a 15 minute version, right? So we probably need circuit light versions and also, you know, various branches for specific um, sectors within the client sector. So within campaign design and uh, rapid delivery and publishing and live operation, we have got three other conceptual buckets, right, of tools and tactics that we've got. We've got platforms. You know, what are the tools available at our disposal? You know, WordPress is a platform. Google Analytics is a platform. Facebook pay-per-click, in, in a sense, is, is a platform. Some of these are also channels. How do you reach people? Um, so, you know, an example of a channel might be marketing automation using an email follow-up sequence. Squeeze pages. Um, might be channels, Facebook pay-per-click, Facebook organic marketing, Google pay-per-click, SEO, right? These are, um, to some degree, independent of the platform, 
what is the most appropriate way to try and reach people? Um, what's the most cost effective? What's going to be the most effective? based on what the strategy tells us. And this can apply to your campaign design, obviously, then rolling onto your delivery and also live operation. Uh, and we've also got tactics as well. Product launch is a tactic. Um, PR is a tactic. So there's, there's a certain amount of overlap between these three things, but I think we have got three conceptual buckets. Now, Here's what's important. Looping back to what we said before, nobody can have a full vision of all the platforms. Nobody can have mastership of all the platforms or all the channels or all the tactics. We tend to specialize and that is natural. That is the T-shaped marketer. Um, it's natural and it's right. I cannot produce content or material that will teach people um, that, that will be able to take you through all of the the thinking the thought processes to know is this right for me is this right for my business for my organization for my context I can't do it none of us on here can do it we all have a piece of the puzzle so what we what we're going to need when it comes to platforms channels and tactics is this 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 is why we need the world right it's, it's here comes everybody. So we need to partner with, to invite experts in all of these particular areas and to keep doing it over time in order to generate this material, this content that, that we need, um, the systems, the thought processes, and also to maintain them and to keep them going because, you know, strategies, Strategy is great, you know, we, we, we could keep it to strategy, but what I'm trying to figure out is what is the what is the real boundary of marketing? And, you know, is it something that we can literally circumscribe? Can we draw a line around all of these things? That's what I'm trying to do. And this is how it seems to make sense to me. In addition to all of this, there are two other elements that we may address. One of them is the agency engagement model. Literally, um, we, we could, this is part of my idea that if, if you've been on the calls for the last few weeks, you'll, you'll recognize. We could actually open source the way that you run an agency, the way that you run engagements with clients. Because obviously that is part of, or maybe part of marketing. And the other one could be the agency management model as well. Can we help to, can we collaboratively um, create, define, and then continually improve a system for running agencies and for running client engagements? So big question marks above, above those things. But I think if you take all of this, all of these things together, my perception, my view, is that all of this can apply to um, a pay-per-click agency, a large-scale web agency, or a direct mail, you know, it's, it's agencies. It could apply, and and also, of course, um, excluding the agency engagement and management side, it can apply to DIY. So you could have a small business owner who could come along and use this stuff and use it for themselves, and that's what we'll get on to next. So quickly, how, how is everyone gonna benefit from this? Well, there's two main sides, right? Ig ignoring the, the people who currently uh, ransom off their version of internet marketing intelligence. We've got the client sector, and we've got marketing professionals themselves client sector and also by the way this benefits the economy at large if everybody gets to market better then you know like we're saying it's a rising tide lifts all boats the whole economy should benefit okay so you know we've we've got a a spectrum within the client sector we've got the DIY market right these are the guys you know i, I used to have a mate who was totally addicted to, to Linux distributions. And he, was, he would download and install two or three in an evening. You know, he was just absolutely fascinated with it. He was a DIY guy, right? 
passionate about Linux. And we've got small businesses, organizations, millions of these people out there in the world who need marketing intelligence and want to use it for their own purposes. And I want them to be able to do that. So what they get is free, open, unrestricted access to the current best practice, and that's great. But everybody within the client sector, for whether they're in um, for-profit, corporations, non-profits, whatever it may be, everyone should benefit from standardization. This is one of the, you know, kind of a universal principle, really. If we standardize the marketing system, the marketing process, when you standardize something, when you write it down, you can then improve on it. And we can do that iteratively and continually over time. We can gather all of the intelligence together in one place. Um, there's a lot of benefits. If you've got a standardized system, for example, the controls in an automobile are standardized. Right? I can get into a car in America, even though the steering wheel's on the, on the other side of, of the, the car and I have to drive on the other side of the road, I can get into a car in America and I know how to work it. Right? It isn't chitty chitty bang bang with knobs and levers and, and things in funky places. The accelerator is always on the right hand side. Yeah, then it's always the brake. That's how cars work. There is a, a sense of standardization and what that then facilitates is uh, migration. You know, I can go up to an, any ATM machine in the world and pretty much know how to use it, right? Because they're standardized. So, you know, it, it allows then me as a customer of, of cars, as, as, as a car user, I can go and become a customer of, of I wouldn't say <laughs> any automobile manufacturer, but, you know, you get the idea. Um, so in, the, in terms of marketing, if open source marketing, if the open source marketing method should become a, a standard that is used by multiple clients, multiple agencies, multiple contractors, multiple consultants, then that allows then movement of clients. A client can say, this agency is not fulfilling what I expect according to this system, therefore I'm going to bring in another agency. You may then be able to say, I want to go on Odesk and I want to find an open source marketing um, approved person or, or someone who's trained in open source marketing or claims to be in order to run my SEO campaign because I want to be able to give them, that's my strategy document and this is my campaign design, go and implement it. And they go, Roger, you know, we know how it works. Everyone's speaking the same language. So clients can, can be more mobile and uh, obviously the benefit of transparency makes everybody more accountable. In addition, uh, personnel, uh, you know, the labor can also be more mobile. So if I'm working for one open source marketing approved agency, I can move to another one or I can be a freelancer, right? So what we're creating in a sense is a, a subclimate within the marketing world. In the same way that um, you can be a, a WordPress specialist now, right? WordPress is an open source platform, but there's a, there's a, a um, what's the word? Say microcosm or, you know, kind of life cycle around WordPress. So you can be a WordPress specialist or even a Genesis specialist, or you can be a WordPress SEO specialist. And the fact that the standardization has then encouraged the growth and development of a sector, when that happens, you also get specialization and scope for specialization and it rewards specialization. But uh, all within the constraint of a, an agreed set of rules and the way that WordPress works or the way that Linux works, right? These are agreed sets of rules. So there's the, you know, that certain level of, of top-down um, approach. So on the other hand, we've got the marketing professionals. This is those of us on the call. How do we benefit? 
Well, there's lots of ways, and, and you know, I want to be completely and utterly transparent about this, and I also intend to, I'd like to put this video on YouTube as well. Um, we get an expanded customer base, right? If you think, you know, our friend Jonathan is a, is a, a Genesis expert in WordPress, there is a growing market for Genesis within WordPress, right? which is part of the, the bigger WordPress economy, if you like. Um, so those of us here, if we are part of the development of open source marketing, we start to specialize in this system. Um, and clients then start saying, well, I want open source marketing in the same way that they may say, I want the, an Apache web server running WordPress, you know, because that becomes the de facto standard. Then those of us who, who are involved in that, obviously there's, there's more direct work, um, whether at you know, the strategy level or, or even down at the more detailed level, doing what we do best, but within the context of that um, agreed standard. Um, we also get obviously exposure, it, you know, particularly those of us who were in at the beginning. Then we get, you know, to promote our own insights, our own skills uh, to to a market that is hopefully going to grow. And and what we then get with with all of this, as you've seen with Apache or Linux or WordPress or whatever, you then get a a virtuous cycle. You get a positive reinforcement loop. Right? Because when something gets better, it creates its own market. And you know, the market draws in money, draws in people, draws in specialization, which then you know, improves everything, which then you know, just keeps going around like that. So a few um, closing points then on where this might go strategically looking, looking into the future. One possibility might be something like certification. I came across this today. MOOC, Massive Open Online Courses. Right Now, MOOC.org, if I pull that up, is PageRank 10. I've never even heard of this. How many PageRank 10 websites are there around? Okay, So it's an edX destination. Okay, what this means is that um, universities and educational institutions can provide courses completely open for the public to, to follow. This may be a direction that suits open source marketing. Um, yeah, and edX, obviously, if you go on edX as well, edX.org also page rank 10 this is there's a massive massive market i don't know if any of you guys have, have come across this before but it's uh, certainly new to me um conferences you know there's there's a large um obviously linux community wordpress community all of these have got the conferences linux con is 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 one of the main ones i think i've lost my screen sharing linux con and also, you know, potentially professional group. We've got, for example, the Linux Foundation is there, which is a a commercial group. You can you can pay to be part of the Linux Foundation. I think it's um, ninety nine dollars. I don't know if that's ninety nine dollars a year or whatever. But uh, lots lots of potential for growth in in many different directions.